Hey guys, so basically a couple of months ago, I decided I wanted to 3D print an entire set of Master Chief armor that fit me and looks realistic. Now this is a pretty lengthy process and it's currently still in progress, but I'm happy to announce I've completed building the helmet, which is by far the most difficult part. Today, I'll be showing you exactly how I did it. The first part to this suit is the helmet. I found some files on Thingiverse that are modeled after the Mark VI from Halo 3 and that's exactly what I want. Now it's time to print it. So I've gotten all of the pieces printed out here um, and I glued the bottom half um, off camera. So now it's time to kind of like a couple spots on here like that. We're gonna cut those off, sand it down, and then we will start gluing it uh, completely together. So after letting the glue dry uh, last night, it is now ready to be sanded. Get it really smooth, use some Bondo on the seams here that you can kind of still see, and then we can paint it from there. For sanding, I used a mouse sander with 150 grit sandpaper uh, over all the major seams and just overall roughing the helmet up. I then put Bondo over all the seams and divots and holes uh, just to get it really smooth and then I sanded over that. I did this process a couple of times over until it was as smooth as I wanted it. After this, I used some gray filler primer to help reveal any uh, divots or spots that I missed and I sanded over those and I coated it once more in the filler primer to give me a smoother surface to use the spray paint. So the seams are looking a whole lot better. You can kind of still see it down there, uh, but the top's looking really nice. It's decently smooth for the most part. The main uh, mouthpiece is looking really nice. It's smoother. Uh, a lot smoother than before. Yeah, I'm just going to continue to sand it down and then we can paint it. The hunter green I ended up using first turned out way too dark green and did not match the color of Master Chief at all. So after doing some research, I found Krylon Italian Olive. This color ended up being perfect for matching the Halo 3 Master Chief. So now it's time to start masking off the helmet for the parts that are supposed to be in black. And I just used some black spray paint I bought earlier. But yeah, I'm just going around in all the areas that I mark on here and spraying it black. There's also a portion in the back that I did not record me spraying, but in the final result, you'll see how it looks. At this point, I started working on the visor but that would actually take me a lot longer than I thought, so it did not get done when the helmet did. Now that the painting's done, it's time to weather the helmet. Now we're gonna weather the helmet by using um, some black acrylic paint, and then to the paint I added about equal amounts of water uh, to get it nice and watered down so that it won't stick onto the helmet, but it'll still stay enough to look weathered. I use a foam brush because I feel like that works best, but it doesn't really matter. As long as it doesn't dry up before you're done, you should be good to go. So I'm just taking the brush and dabbing over all the helmet. I'll take my rag and I'll dab over that until it looks really dirty and battle worn. And then I let that dry and I'm able to adjust depending on how I think it should look. If it needs to be a little less or a little more, I can fix that, which is a really awesome thing about doing it this way.
So next I'm going to be adding in the paint chips on the helmet. So all the areas where the paint's starting to come off from natural weathering and everything. This part's a little harder just because I had to keep really still and really careful in order not to mess up really bad. But the cool thing about that, if you do mess up, it still looks good because natural weathering is completely random. After that's done, it's time to vacuum form the visor. Now this part is by far the most difficult part of the process. There's tons of videos showing how to do this, but basically you take a clear sheet of PETG plastic, slide it into a frame and heat it up until it starts to dip in the middle and then take the mold and push the plastic over it. The hard part is pushing the frame down at the right angle so the vacuum attached. Remove all the air and seal it. So I built my own vacuum seal box and the frame to fit it and started to vacuum form. On my first attempt, I used my home oven, but after doing some research, I found out that this was not very safe because of the fumes and the plastic. So yeah, definitely don't use your home oven. I decided to repurpose an old toaster oven and that ended up working really well. The box itself was really simple. It's just a wooden box with holes drilled in the top and a larger hole on one of the sides for the vacuum to fit in. After several attempts, I got the perfect seal and the visor was done. I cut it to shape and then went straight to dyeing it. I used two packs of orange fabric dye and let the visors soak for about 20 to 30 minutes and then I dried them really well. And then for the final step of the visor, I bought some spray chrome and in a very thin layer, misted the inside of the visor to make it golden. After this was done, the visor was reflected from the outside, but you could see through from the inside. After adding in two LED lights on each side, the helmet was done. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for part two.